Hey there, all you pro-gun bullies, magnum-packing patriots, sommeliers of the Second Amendment, and connoisseurs of the Constitution. This is the Tap Rack Bang Podcast, episode 11. Thank you for watching the show. We invite all of you to like it, if you like it. Subscribe. Subscribe and Jinx. share it. Go me a Coke. Uh, share it with your pro-gun bully friends. Ring that Liberty Bell so you get the... Alarm of Freedom every time another podcast drops for all of our sweet NAGR content here on the YouTubes. Um, but So do all those things, and we'll move right along to T-shirt time, where we challenge our viewers to leave comments answering gun-related riddles. Last week, we asked, in honor of the 4th of July, we asked our viewers, what state had the most signatures on the Declaration of Independence? You want to tell them the, the true answer, Tyler? The answer is Pennsylvania. Pencil tuck, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pencil tucky. Yep. And the first person to comment on the YouTube's comment was Mark Neeson. So we will reach out to this pro gun patriot f and offer him his t shirt. So stay tuned, Mark. Congratulations on answering correctly. And this week I wanted to go a different route with it. I am a big old James Bond fan, and I'm a gun guy, so I wanted to tie those two together for this week's challenge and ask our viewers. We all know that James Bond is known to carry the iconic Walther PPK, both in 32 and now 380. But what did James Bond carry before he was issued his Walther PPK? Did you know this before I told you? I knew the brand, but I didn't know the model. All right, so comment below if you think you know what James Bond carried before he was issued his iconic Walther PPK. First one to answer it correct will get a dope ass NAGR t shirt free of charge so you can rep the brand, show off your pro gun patriotism around town, and be the envy of all your Magnum packing buddies. You bet. So comment below. Uh, don't cheat. We're on the honor system here. No Google sleuthing. If you know it, answer below. But that ends t shirt time. We're moving on to talk about the bullet points. What is the news in the world of the fight to save the Second Amendment this week, starting with a piece of good pro-gun legislation that was actually introduced in Nancy Pelosi's House of Representatives behind, behind the walls of Fort Pelosi. We have Bob Good, uh, Republican representative from Virginia CD5, introducing the Pistol Act. Tyler, what do you know about this one? Oh, let's see. The Pistol Act is basically define what uh, Biden wants to do with uh, so-called AR-15 pistols, AK pistols, all that kind of stuff. Pistol braces. Pistol braces in general. And uh, this would nullify any pistol braces from mm -hmm. being uh, issued as a machine gun, so to say. Yeah. Keeping them... Keeping them off the National Firearms Act regulations, right. which is what they're trying to do through executive actions and rules brought down from the ATF. Essentially, this is a big legislative middle finger to Joe Biden and the ATF. And that's the type of uh, shenanigans that us here on the Tap Rack Bang podcast are all about. So mm -hmm. cheers to you, uh, Representative Bob Good, for submitting the Protecting Individual Sovereignty Through Our Laws, or pistol act and introducing that in congress good yeah, shit and it, it it gets kind of defeating when we hear about all these anti-gun bills and you bet you know it's a breath of fresh air to finally see someone in congress actually taking a stand for the second amendment here so hell yeah we're, we're pumped about it yeah we'll see what comes it's yeah it's a it's a badass bill um there's obviously there's there's more good pro-gun bills out there and we invite you to go to nationalgunrights.org and check out our bill watch page where you can Check out all the good gun bills and all the gun control crap that's floating around the cesspool in the D.C. swamp to yep. have, have yourself a bit of fun researching legislation. I know that's that's a good time for me. Right. Um, all right, moving on. San Jose. What's Do you know the way to San Jose? I don't. Okay. <laughs> well, at any rate. I what, know what's going on what's, there. What's going on with guns in San Jose? So San Jose is in response to a tragedy – is has a knee-jerk reaction to um yeah exactly to require gun owners to carry liability insurance and essentially they are the first in the nation to do something like this and 
you know for damn sure this will be met with legal action. Bet your sweet ass it will. Exactly. And our foundation will get involved, our legal arm. Um, if you want to join, get it to the foundation, you know, give a tax deductible donation, go to gunrightsfoundation.org, get involved. We're involved with a litany of stuff, yeah. defending gun owners in the courts, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, paying a annual fee to be a gun owner in San Jose. It's another example of scapegoating law abiding gun owners for the yeah. acts of criminals and madmen, but mm-hmm. that's that's the old classic play of the anti gun left is right. you know, it's it's obviously all all of our fault whenever a <laughs> criminal does something evil, so we should have to be paying for it, of course, is their logic, but yeah, we, and not to not, use their words, we call bullshit on that. Exactly. And it really hurts the lower class of Americans because Hell yeah. you know, they may be living in sketchy neighborhoods because mm-hmm. that's all they can afford, but you know, they're they're required to pay this fee. To, yeah. to own a gun and then on top of that you got your concealed carry permit but well, san jose yeah, you can't ev- get everything one, in california that's already making it virtually impossible for someone to protect themselves and you throw this on top of it and yeah it's like a completely regressive tax yeah where it's punishing they're taxing the poorest right. americans yeah, yeah absolutely so yeah. so just don't, stay don't tuned. believe them when they say that they're the party of the of the working class because here's an example exactly of the gun grabbers <laughs> punishing law-abiding Working class Americans. Exactly. Yeah. Some gross shit. Yeah. But we also have good news. Yeah. Supreme Court rules pro gun last week in AFPF v. Bonta. We've talked it before, talked about it before here on the show. Um, the National Foundation for Gun Rights submitted an amicus brief um, arguing our point. The bill or this um, ridiculous rule coming out of California. Started with um, Kamala Harris, and now it's the current Attorney General of California, Bonta. Essentially, wanted pro-gun organizations, or basically any conservative organizations, to be able to hand over their list of donors to the government in California. You know what can go wrong with that? <laughs> I mean, we we've seen what could go wrong with hmm. that. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. Oh, it was in New York, where a newspaper actually got a hold of concealed carry permit holders in their region state whatever and actually published it in their newspaper and yeah. that just brings un- unnecessary harassment and whatever mm-hmm. towards gun owners yeah in this world of you know antifa thugs burning down buildings oh, yeah, it's and so attacking much law abiding citizens is this what you want lost and stolen guns maybe telling everyone where the guns are isn't a great idea yeah yeah no shit no shit. <laughs> yeah, but the Supreme Court actually finally issued a pro-gun ruling. It, it doesn't happen as often as it should, but they said that California is not allowed to just without cause demand that NAGR and other pro, pro-gun and conservative organizations just hand over our donors. And even if they didn't, we were never going to do it. No. We, we respect our members. We value their privacy. No matter what anyone says, it's a First Amendment right to support your causes, to freely associate and petition your government, and to do so anonymously and privately for your own safety. Yeah, and like we talked about, we, we've kind of been in this situation before with the state of Montana. Yeah. We actually took a court ca- case against Montana all the way up to the Supreme Court about the same exact thing, but obviously the Supreme Court failed to uh, do anything with our case. Yeah, they refused to take it up, but finally... Some good shit out of the Supreme Court. Hopefully more to follow. Yes. Agreed. All right. Final bullet point. We've been talking about it for a long time. Constitutional carry in Louisiana. We want to get one, at least one more constitutional carry state on the year. And Louisiana is oh so close. Can you give us the rundown of where we stand on con carry in Louisiana? So obviously Governor Edwards vetoed constitutional carry and uh, – it passed with an overwhelming majority in both houses. Mm-hmm. So veto proof. Yes. So um, the Louisiana Constitution calls for a veto session to be automatically ske- scheduled whenever a governor vetoes legislation. However, lawmakers who have canceled every veto have canceled every veto session in Louisiana since 1974. It's wild. So obviously. 
I mean, constitutional carry is our big thing, but there's a litany of other bills that are that have been vetoed, and they are all clear conservative priorities that enjoy overwhelming public support. So, um, ballots are sent out to the lawmakers, and they will determine whether or not they will have a veto session. They're due back July 15th, so in a couple days. And both chambers need to get a majority to come back to veto override session. And then once they do and they take up the bills, two-thirds support is needed to override a veto. So, Which they had the numbers when the, the bills passed. Exactly. And, and if you look at the vote counts – from both the House and the Senate, I think it was the House that came up two votes short if they voted strict party line. Mm-hmm. So we need a couple of Democrats on our side, which we obviously had yeah. in the uh, regular session. So we'll be looking forward to that, yeah. seeing what happens. Yeah, if you're um, watching from Louisiana, um, definitely call your state senator and state rep and let them know that a vote to not hold this veto override session is a vote against constitutional carry 100 percent. that you know they don't get any cover for this just because it's a procedural vote or anything like that they need to be made aware that the members our members are paying attention our viewers pro-gun louisianans are paying attention and a vote not to hold this session and a vote against the bill if it happens is a vote for gun control and it's a vote to deny louisiana citizens their constitutional carry rights exactly so get get on the horn louisianans we know you got it in you you're so close and it's such a like to get this far and to come up short it's such a pain in the ass to get back to this point so we can't let this opportunity slip away like it's happened a lot of times where you get right to the finish line and then it takes years Yep. Like sometimes decades to to get this far again. So don't exactly. don't screw this up. Don't don't lose this opportunity, Louisiana. Take action now. But that's all we got for news right now. Let's let's play with some guns, buddy. Yeah. Let's dive inside the waistband. We're gonna dive into your waistband and our good buddy Bill Edwards also. Yeah. We're, we're gonna get all up in his waistband. You you guys are a couple of Magnum packing patriots, and we got a couple <laughs> of Magnums up on here, dude. Yeah. Right, we? Yeah. So uh, what'd you bring today? I brought in my Ruger SP one hundred one. Yeah. It is chambered in three fifty seven Magnum. Yeah, Magnum. Magnum. That's right. Magnums. And it'll also shoot thirty eight special. That's special. So uh, this is your typical. I'd say small to medium sized revolver. It is double action, holds five rounds, and it's just no bullshit kind of gun. And yeah. uh, let's see what Billy's got there. Yeah, so our homeboy Billy let us play with his Ruger LCR, also 357, uh, also five shots. As you can see, this guy is hammerless, has the fiber optic sight and the, the rubberized grip on it. Definitely like more set up for a, a concealed carry piece but right. do you, do you carry yours on the rig or uh every once in a while it works its way into your rotation for a wheel gun wednesday perhaps yeah every once in a while it does um although you're lacking capacity with mm. just especially these f- smaller frames you got five mm. rounds but it is absolutely necessary to keep a little speed loader on you at all times with definitely one of these. Like and, shotguns, revolvers are very hungry. Right. And if I had a choice to go back and, you know, purchase a different gun, I'd probably go with the LCR. Yeah. For one reason, it doesn't – it's hammerless. Mm-hmm. This is another snag point for when you're drawing yep. your weapon. And two – Especially if you're uh, inside the waistband or yeah. anything like that. And also the LCR is, like, lots of plastic, which people hate, but it is – Light times lighter than this SP-101. Light times lighter. You heard it here, folks. Light times lighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely reliable. 357 is a proven cartridge. Uh, what are your thoughts on someone who – what would you say to someone who wants or is considering a revolver for their either their first gun or a different gun? If they're going to – they want to carry a revolver, what, what are your thoughts on that? Be proficient with it. Yeah, I go think out and train. The one thing that bothers me, and if if you carry carry a revolver, absolutely carry it every day. Train with it. Be proficient with it. But all too often, you see 
when a guy takes his girlfriend or his wife into the into the gun store and she wants to carry a gun and this is the first thing they go to is a a tiny little 357 and this thing's hammerless so it has a pretty a pretty long trigger pull albeit it's it's super smooth and it's a really nice trigger for a revolver but it's definitely a little heavier mm-hmm. and it's definitely a long trigger pull but no it's it's a magnum cartridge and you you're asking you know maybe a a woman who's not as well trained or who's someone new to firearms it's I, I think you have to be much more proficient to be carrying a revolver in my yeah, opinion. I agree. And obviously most women are smaller in stature. I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, yeah, yeah. but other than your sister, other, <laughs> uh, obviously a 357 Magnum to a first time shooter is going to be a lot of recoil to handle. Mm-hmm. So, and um, the whole concept of it too, like the idea that ca- carrying a revolver because it's simpler is not really a thing in, in this era of Mm-mm. striker fired pistols where, you know, you, you have your magazine in and it's locked to the rear. All you got to do is draw and pull the trigger. So the manual of arms is no simpler. And if you ever had to reload, I'd much rather have the magazine fed option. So exactly. I really like the idea of the revolver as a, like, this is a great, I think a minimalist option. Yeah. Like if you carry your Glock 19 or what have you on a daily basis, but maybe you're wearing your gym shorts and you have a pocket holster for this, this makes a lot of sense. Or is a or is a backup, backup gun. Yep, ankle yeah. holster. Uh-huh. And maybe not a backup gun that you intend to shoot, but you can quickly arm a friend in a bad situation. Right. I'm not crazy about the rear sights on these, but I do no. like the the fiber optic on this catches your eye pretty good. Right. Um, and, and one thing I want to go back to is the trigger. Is that mm-hmm. like – so this – SP-101 has a little bit heavier double action than mm-hmm. that LCR. Yeah. And it, it takes quite a bit of force to actually pull that back. And that's mm-hmm. one thing I like about striker-fired semi-autos mm-hmm. is because it kind of bridges that gap between, you know, the heavy de- double action and the single action that's just right there. Yeah. But when you're in a defensive situation, you're not going to have time to pull back that hammer and go into sing- single yeah, action. Yeah, if you're going straight from the holster trying yeah. to shoot, yeah. So I think so. I think for smaller statured gun owners who are just getting in, mm-hmm. I I still think you can't go wrong with the semi-auto striker fired. Yeah, I think I wouldn't recommend this to anyone as their first gun if they don't have a lot of training. Agreed. But as you travel down your journey as a gun owner, um, I think it there's a lot of applications for it. One thing people point out is their reliability, and I think revolvers are reliable until they're not like. It's not as easy to clear a malfunction on a revolver as it is uh, uh, on a semi-auto. Um, people also point to the fact that you can't push this out of battery if you're shoving it into into a bad guy's ribs, which is yeah. something to consider, but that's kind of a, a very specific issue if you're punch-shooting people and don't want to have a malfunction. But Yeah, going, going to malfunctions, uh, one simple thing is that you can't tap rack bang it. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> so that might be a disqualifier for a lot of you pro gun bullies out there that you want to be able to tap rack bang. Right. So yeah, but check out the the Ruger line of revolvers, American made, Magnums. Yeah. Magnums. We call it. We're Magnum packing patriots here. So I su- I support them with a few caveats. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hop on out of you and Billy's waistband and move it along, buddy. Back by popular demand, we're bringing back the shooting blank section. We left it out last week, but you folks wanted it back, so we're gonna dive all up in the social medias and look at some stupid gun grabbing bullshit. Um, starting with a tweet from Triple Lips at Blondie 007. I'd say, first of all, if you're going to be hating on the Second Amendment, you don't get to have 007 in your in your Twitter Twitter handle. Nope. Degree. Yeah, so what's this dumbass have to say, Tyler? Now, how cute is this? They raising them like the monsters they become. They always love to have proper grammar in these, yeah. in these tweets. Hashtag gun control. Hashtag, hashtag gun violence. Hashtag homegrown terrorist. Well, I'm already terrified by what I'm reading here. Let's let's take a look at this homegrown terrorist that Triple Lips is appalled by. Roll tape. Little binary. So we got a adorable young girl. 
says so she's shooting a binary trigger until the leftists out there know that's not what binary means. How about that HK slap? Badass, outstanding trigger control, shooting on the move, completely respecting the firearm, obeying every single weapon safety rule like a boss. This quote-unquote homegrown terrorist, I think not, looks like a girl who is being raised right and she makes me proud to be an American just watching this. Look at that. Just just handling that little MP5. And it and it looks like it has a pistol brace on there, which uh, without a doubt is also making triple lips upset too. Exactly. Yeah. But. So we thought a fun game to play today for shooting blanks would be to to look at some anti-gun politicians and just anti-gun gun grabbers and haters who clearly know less about firearms and um, have less experience and knowledge and are less safe with firearms than our badass little friend and her MP5. Starting with California's own Kevin DeLeon. Everyone's seen this clip before, but it's always fun to, to watch it again. So yep. go ahead and press play there. And you can create this illegal weapon. This is a ghost gun. This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. 30 magazine clip. So, <laughs> lots to laugh at right there. 30 um, magazine clip. First of all, do you think the little girl with the MP5 knows the difference between a clip and a magazine? Yeah. You bet your ass she does. Yeah. But this dipshit who's talking to the American people like he knows a thing or two, can't keep his story straight, doesn't know nothing about anything. I don't think Jerry Michalek could shoot 30 rounds in half a second. No. I mean, he'd come <laughs> close, but... He's a, he's a fast old shooter, but at 30 rounds in half a second, I call bullshit on that one. But yeah. one thing people don't point out about this video, but has always been my favorite thing, is just the cops, the look on that <laughs> cop's face, just like, what is this ignorant like right now, dickhead he's just, talking about? He's just so disgusting. <laughs> he's like, it would have taken two minutes to do homework yeah. before this press conference. Mm -hmm. This is another, This is like the kid who didn't read the book. Yeah. Just pulling, pulling knowledge <laughs> out of his asshole. And claiming that he, he knows better than law-abiding citizens. I think he needs to be told a thing or two about firearms from our little friend in her MP5. Because she clearly knows more than his dumb ass. And obviously, De Leon is shooting blanks. Definitely shooting blanks. I'm, I do feel safer that there's a zip tie going through the chamber to keep his dumb ass from doing anything <laughs> stupid. So credit to the person who had the wherewithal to make sure that he wasn't hand or, handed a functioning rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Silly. All right, carry on. In half a second. This was not manufactured Manufacture. with a legitimate gun manufacturer, either in the United States or in another country. This was actually made illegally in someone's garage. Pause. So what if it was made in someone's garage? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Whatever. We, national we've all pastime. Yeah, national pastime. We've all seen this one. Let's let's skip on to the the next example. See if any of these winners can uh, can hold a candle to the safety and firearms knowledge of our little friend. Yep. All right. So next we have everyone's favorite gun grabbing senator from California, good old Diane Feinstein. What what do you notice about this picture, Tyler? Well, for one, she's got her finger on the trigger. She's got her booger hooker all up on that bang probably, switch. Probably pointing at some press members over there yeah. on the, the side over there. but Just violating all sorts of firearm safety rules. Are you noticing a pattern here? That all of these gun grabbers are way more dangerous with firearms than this little girl who has her shit together. And not only that, and I don't mean to shit on my California friends here, but they're all from California so far. Yeah, good point. I, I didn't catch that, but yeah. But yeah, again, this daft witch thinks that she knows more about you, more about guns than you, and she gets to tell you what you're allowed to do, but we're not going to have that up in here. Yeah, I think my fighting. grandpa has that suit jacket. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Man, but, no shit. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, this guy's hilarious. So, yeah, this is the video. Oh, you do have it here. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Put so the full screen. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 
will we be able to put this side by side with the girl walking and shooting and oh, controlling it? Oh, we, will do that. oh, we have yeah. the technology? Yeah. We have the technology. Dope. You kids in the computers, let me tell you. So this was the, the infamous, infamous CNN reporter who claimed to get PTSD from shooting uh, an... An <laughs> AR-15. An AR-15. A little 223. A grown-ass man. I mean, whatever man card this guy walked into that room with, I think, I hope they were all taken away from him after this. I just, swear, this just gets funnier each and every time you watch it. Just bitch-hipping the shit out of it, getting... <laughs> he could bump fire it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His cheek nowhere near the butt stock. No. God. Again, they all need to take lessons from this little quote unquote homegrown terrorist. Gun owners are people too. Yeah. They're not monsters. This freaking twink that I could watch this all day long. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. anyway, this this old hag is shooting mm-hmm. blanks, but <laughs> Yep. Let's see. Oh, I know so what this just, one is. This is just the a uh, uh, a silly old quote. Again, we just watched Probably a five-year-old girl handling a semi-automatic firearm like a boss. But yep. what did grown-ass woman Sheila Jackson Lee say about her experience shooting a little two twenty three? She said AR-15s are as heavy as 10 moving boxes and that they fire 50 caliber bullets. Dealing with a caliber weapon, I've held an AR-15 in my hand. I wish I had it. It is as heavy as... 10 boxes that you might be moving uh, and the bullet that is utilized a 50 caliber which that is partially true because you can chamber ar-15s and 50 bales yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's what she was shooting but still they're they're T- 10 not- boxes of what helium balloons <laughs> exactly <laughs> dipshit but it, it she's got to be pretty scared now because she's a congresswoman from texas mm-hmm. texas is now constitutional carry <laughs> <laughs> so How'd that work out for you, you, pushing your agenda? Dumbass. Yeah, I, and I think this one's less ignorance as it is. It's just her being a bold-faced freaking liar. Exactly. Either she never held or shot an AR-15, or she did and is just absolutely lying about it. Either way, Sheila Jackson Lee shooting blanks. What do we got next? I think it's... Ah, cool. So, so Andrew Yang, um, hopefully we have some more uh, masculine energy like we did from the video a second ago, coming from Andrew Yang. I have a six and three year old boy, I'm imagining. Uh oh. I was imagining it was one of them that got shot and the other saw it. (laughs) That scene that she described, I'm sorry, it's like very, very affecting. You're right that when there's a gun in the household, you're more likely to have a child get shot or the owner get shot than not in our little little girl's household. Not in our MP5 girl's household because she doesn't have a crybaby daddy being a pussy. The only person getting shot in that house is an intruder. Yeah, armed intruder. Can you imagine being the guy to break into that (laughs) household and be face to face with this little five-year-old in her MP5? God, (laughs) he he needed to change pants after that. Yeah. So more crybaby bullshit. Andrew Yang also shooting blanks. Um, okay, so next. Last one. Yeah. And can you believe Andrew Yang wanted to be, like, that was going to be our president? Like, how, do, how are we supposed, like, running for president, supposed to stand up to China and Putin and stuff, crying like a pussy in front of all of America and all the world to see? <laughs> and he's just pulling the same card that the whole left is doing is – Oh, my emotions. Oh, mm-hmm. no. I'm so well, I think scared. they have a, a monopoly on caring and as, as if pro-gun Americans don't, you know, cry and don't get upset every time that there's a tragedy. Like we feel the pain the same same way everyone else does. They don't they don't own giving a shit. We, we mourn the dead as well. But um, we have logic behind our solutions and say that good Americans should be able to fight back. Yep. More guns equals yeah. less crime. Booyah. But here's a lovely picture of the um, majority leader of the U.S. Senate, Chuck Schumer, just just limp wristing the shit out of a little pistol. <laughs> Is that a Tech Nine or something there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this looks like the first the first frame of one of those gun fails videos where someone's about to get smashed in the face by the recoil. 
Look at how I, happy he is. I know, and he, he's having a good time. Why can you? <laughs> how do you hate guns so much? And clearly, you're enjoying the the fun of shooting. Right. But but I would pay good money to see him just get smashed in the face by that gun. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. All right, I think that's our our last one. But a big tap rack bang s- t- salute to our. Little gal rocking with her MP5 into her dad, who's obviously raising her right. She's definitely not shooting blanks, but all of these leftists we just looked at definitely are. Yep. Cool. So that will conclude episode number 11 11. of the Tap Rack Bang podcast. So don't forget, visit all the links down in the description. It takes two minutes. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Also, we are still giving away these... Tap Rack Bang stickers. Oh, free. Get yourself one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share yep. the podcast. Spread the word. Spread the word. After you submit your sticker info, donate too. Yeah. The stickers are free, but keep us on the air by making a donation after you submit your sticker info. Absolutely. Fund the fight to save the Second Amendment. Yep. Cool. Cheers, and thank you for joining us. Okay.